What's up everybody? How's everybody doing today? This is my introduction to Trial of Ascension, Floors 1 to 100, Farmable Monsters Guide. Alright? So, before I begin, guys, this is all based on my opinion and my experiences. Alright? This is not set in stone. I understand other people have better monsters. Some people have much, much better monsters. Some people don't. Some people want to see this. I actually, honestly, this series, I'm being fully honest with everybody, this is driving me insane. I bought a new tablet two weeks ago. The, they, they updated the operating software. I didn't know. The settings weren't set up for, the, for it to automatically get the new, uh, the new operating software, operating system, whatever, the update. And it just drove me insane because my recording app, which is MobiZen, didn't work for three or four days. So every time I tried to use it, the screen just froze and I, the commentary stayed the same, but the screen just froze and I lost about five to six hours of footage between redoing and doing and this and that. And then I even lost some commentary too. I had to mute the commentary altogether because there was some noise and it just drove me crazy. But I made this series. Now, I don't know if they're going to watch this video or not. It doesn't matter to me. I don't remember who it was that asked me to make this series. But I told them I'm going to make it. And usually, I try to keep my word on what I do. Sometimes I take a little too long, but sooner or later, you're going to see it. Okay? Sooner or later, it's going to happen. So, I wanted to keep my word to this person that asked me to make this series. And I'm making it so far. I'm up to only floor 70. All right? I should be at 80, but because of all the delays and everything, I should actually be done, to be honest with you all together. I spent my entire Memorial Day just making videos, uh, editing, and doing everything. So, this is literally, this, this series literally drove me a little nuts. So, let's move on to the monsters. We'll talk about the monsters, alright? Now, you got Sigmaris here, okay? Sigmaris is a great single target DPS monster. He also has... An AoE, too, which is amazing. He also has some utility to him as well. So, his first skill has a chance to stun, and when it's maxed out, it's at a 48% chance to stun. His second skill, if you get a critical hit, will freeze an enemy. So, you can pretty much freeze and stun, and take out, and pretty much, and uh, immobilize two monsters. Then he has this AoE over here. It's an AoE weakened attack. Great skill. All right, it hits very hard, especially for the tanky monsters that you're going up against. So all around great monster. His leader ability does not work in Trial of Ascension. Not only that, when it comes to fusion, he's 100% farmable and he doesn't contradict with Boromos. So if you have the materials for one, don't delay building him because the, the, they don't contradict with each other. So it's good to build the Sigmaris. I honestly think everybody should have a Sigmaris. So he's, here's his rune build. I have hit points on him for farming, for being able to survive in Trial of Ascension. Usually it's attack, crit damage, attack. I usually tell people to do attack, crit damage, attack if they want to use him in arena and stuff like that. So, these are all his overall runes. Now, we move on to Kanamiya. Kanamiya. I'm going to say this from now. He does not need to be 6-star. Can he can remain as a 5-star. I made him 6-star long before Veromos came along. So, he's a great monster. There is not a single wasted move with Kanamiya. All right? Kanamiya has this stun over here, which has a chance of getting off 64% chance of proccing, which is really good. He has this, this skill right here, which fills up the attack bar of an ally or himself, which is actually very, very important sometimes. Sometimes when you need an ally like, to use a skill that you need, this will come through for you. And he has this AoE heal and, and cleanse, removes all harmful effects. When it's maxed out, it's at about 19.5% heal, which isn't bad. It's not great, but it's not bad either. So I always tell people to do violent runes on him. 
You can go to Faimon and get four star uh, hit point percentage runes and put them on him. All right. He, the, I don't suggest Swift at all, and that's because of the second skill right here. He can research himself, and then uh, the chances for violent ruins is the first chance is twenty two percent, and then it's seventeen percent. He actually resets that with his uh, with with his attack bar uh, research. So here are his runes. I honestly leave this ruin on. I, I should have replaced it by now. People tell me to replace it all the time. I leave this ruin on just to show how good of a monster he is. Okay? I have the three star hit point percentage ruin on him. So then there's Rauk. Great single target DPS monster. Alright? These are his overall stats. He has this skill right here. It weakens defense and it has a chance to attack consecutively. Consecutively, sometimes I've seen him attack ten times. Okay, with a uh, swipe 10 times with, with this attack. It can be very deadly. Then he has this attack, the team up attack. This attack can reduce the cooldown time of whoever he uses the team up with. So it's random who he uses the team up with, but if he gets the team up with the right monster, it can make or break you. Then he has this skill right here. Every time he kills a monster, every time he kills an enemy monster, he, uh, he, he goes again no matter what. So, we're going to move on to why Violent Runes. Because if he kills a monster, he's going to reset the Violent Rune chance to proc. Instead of it being, let's say he goes, let's say he goes, he doesn't kill the monster, and he Violent procs, and he kills him, it goes back to 22%. So, really the build for him is Violent uh, Blade. But I have Energy because those are my best attack runes for him at the moment. Then there's Seek. Guys, let me tell you something. I've suggested Seek to a lot of people. Anybody that I have told to six-star him has not regretted it. Some people don't want to listen to me. Seek changed my whole arena life. Okay? I use him on my speed team. I actually use Seek from floors probably 1 to 89 on my speed team. Maybe even 90. On my speed trial of ascension runs. For when I want to rank in trial of ascension. So, he, this skill right here doesn't do anything. It has a, like a vampire effect, but it hits really hard. And then this skill right here, it's pretty much, it pretty much hits double of what this skill does. So, if this one's hitting for 10 to 15,000, this one's hitting for 20 to 30,000. Sometimes I've seen him hit for up to 45,000 with this second skill. He has this team buff, increases attack power, po uh, attack power and critical rate. For allies for three turns. This is an amazing buff. It works out great. Especially in the arena. Especially in Trial of Ascension. Especially when I need, I need to hit harder in Trial of Ascension. So this is his rune build. It is Swift Blade. I put Swift. I personally like him on Swift. Why? Because I want him to buff my attackers first. I, I have different attackers at different speeds. I want him to be able to buff them first. No matter what. So that's why I have him with Swift Runes. Beretta. Beretta is a four-star almost must if you don't have Tyron to fuse. Okay? He brings a lot to the table. All right? Now, he's, uh, he, he's categorized as an attack monster. His attacks really don't scale too well with, uh, with attacks, so I don't even bother to put attack on him. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he has this skill... Really doesn't do much. It's not a great. It's not what I depend on from him. He has this skill, Turbulence, which reduces the attack bar of a single enemy to zero. This comes in very, very handy, extremely handy. If you've seen some of my previous videos with farmable teams for Trial of Ascension or even Dragons or anything like that, this skill comes in very handy. All right. Then we've got this. It puts dots, damage over time, constant damage, okay? It's an AoE, it doesn't hit hard, but the damage over time does do a lot of damage. He puts up to two dots for three turns, which is pretty much 30% of the enemy's hit points. So if you can survive and get it, get it going a second time, you'll take away 60% of the enemy's hit points. Then 
we've got this leader ability. Guys, everybody that has been watching my videos knows I am a speed freak, okay? Speed, 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 speed. This is probably one of the better leader abilities for Trial of Ascension. Sometimes you will need to be a little tankier to survive, to get a hit point leader ability, but speed is the way to go throughout the Trial of Ascension, in my opinion. So, these are his runes. I ruined him to spare focus, speed, hit point, hit point. Now, as I said, he's not much of an attacker. He is based off of hit points, off of attack. His, his category is attack. But he has a very high base hit points, and you want him to survive. So, I would put hit points over, I would, I would build him hit points, especially if you want to use him in dungeons and stuff like that, over attack. Just to have, just to make sure he gets that, 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 that third skill off a second time. So, this is one of my personal favorite monsters, Shannon, okay? She's a great monster. She is another monster. There is no wasted move with her, just like Kanamiya. Why? She has a glancing hit debuff with her first skill. Glancing hit is very important for Trial of Ascension, Arena, everywhere. Guild Wars, it's very good everywhere. She has an AoE slow, and then she has this AoE buff, which buffs attack and defense. Then you put Despair Ruins on her, and she is just a complete utility monster. With her first two skills, she has an a she can AOE stun, and then she can stun random enemies with her first skill. So I put Despair Energy on her. You can build her Despair Focus. Now people say, put uh, why don't why don't I put speed on her? I have plus thirty nine speed from substats, and I like her tanky. I think she's a little better tanky because we'll talk about the speed on her in with the next monster. But I think she's a little bit better tanky to survive. Okay? Now we're going to talk about Bernard. All right? Bernard is another one of my personal favorite monsters. He's actually one of my personal favorites in Arena also. He has this skill right here. Increases the attack bar of all allies by 30% and also increases attack speed for two turns. So he's making sure your entire team goes first and probably second as well. All right, especially in Trial of Ascension. He has this skill right here. Uh, it weakens defense and weakens attack. So that's another very good skill to have. Now, you can't say Bernard is... There isn't a single wasted move with Bernard. Because this first skill sometimes is wasted. Because he doesn't hit very hard. But he brings so much to the team. That I think he's better the way... He, I think he's better than most monsters that don't bring that don't that you know all of them have a different different uh different role. His role is so important that I find him more important than Kanamiya, in my opinion. So here are his runes, by the way. Swift. I tell people Swift and whatever they get to make him faster. Alright. Swift focuses the build for him. Speed, hit points, defense, speed, hit point, hit point is really the build that you're supposed to do. I have crit damage and accuracy because I need we, you you need the accuracy. So you could do speed, hit point, accuracy, or speed, uh, defense, accuracy. The reason why the crit damage is there, it's really for the plus 14 speed. That's it. There is no other reason why I have the crit damage rune there. So that's just what it is. Now, another great monster. I have not put him in to my videos yet. But I'm sure that, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I'm almost sure that I'm going to need him somewhere. So he is a good monster. He brings a lot to the table with this clean shot right here. If you build him really tanky, he will just murder some monsters. He has a self-heal, and then he has this skill that decreases the attack bar by, uh, attack, yeah, the attack gauge by 25%. I tell some people when they're in the lower stages of the game to do all energy. Uh, the, the, the late game build for him is Vampire Nemesis runes. I have shield because I don't have the right Nemesis runes for him. I actually do have the right Nemesis runes for him, but I put them on Talc instead. But as I said, it is what it is with that. Now, the next monster... 
I personally don't like Amon, but he is a great monster. He's not horrible. He's not bad either. All right, he has this passive right here, recovers all allies uh, by 12% of his hit points when he gets a critical hit. Now, I don't tell people to not build him because I don't like him. It's hard to build him, especially when you're early in the game. You need a 100% crit rate. Some people can't reach that from uh, just substats, and they can't get the 6-star crit rate ruin, stuff like that. He's no good with 99% crit rate. I've had instances with Amon where I had him with 99% crit rate and I needed him to get a crit and to heal and he wouldn't get it and I would just completely fail. And I would just want to throw my phone away. But that's besides the point. So what's good about my Amon is that I don't have violent runes on him. The, the build for Amon is violent blade or violent nemesis. I don't have the violent runes for him. I, I put rage blade on him. People laugh at these, but you know what? I really don't care because my violent runes are on monsters that I really, really need to use at the moment. Amon is not a monster I really, really need to utilize right now. So, let's move on to Bella Dion. Bella Dion, guys, everybody says he is the MVP, and he is the MVP. There, He is another monster. There is not a single wasted move with him, Okay. His first attack, his main attack, weakens defense with a 100% chance. His second attack, <coughs> excuse me, his second attack removes all beneficial attacks from a single target, which is great. His third skill increases the attack bar by 30% and your hit points by 30%. How can you go wrong? I use Belladion, I personally use Belladion on Dragon's B10, Guild Wars, and Arena Offense. Not only that, he's in my trial of Ascent, he's in my uh, B10 Giants farmable team. He's going to probably be in my trial of Ascension uh, Floor 100 farmable team. He's a great monster. MVP all the way. There is no other monster. I, I, if you don't build some other some of these monsters bella dion is a must in my opinion i don't care what anybody says so <clears throat> one of the reasons why i'm not using bella dion so far in floor like from floors 1 to 30 or 1 to 35 is because i have ruins on him that are kind of unfair so it's i have really a, a nice set of ruins on him if you don't have the violent runes to put on him. You can put swift runes on him. Swift runes work. Go swift focus, speed, hit point, hit point. Try and get accuracy from substats. It works. It works pretty well. All right. He, it also works for B10 giants. You don't necessarily need violent runes on him. Then there's Darian. He's another monster. No wasted move. He's not an MVP like Belladion, but there is no wasted move on Darian. Okay? His first skill weakens defense. His second skill weakens attack. And he has this passive, which reduces all damage uh, in, uh, to allies, which reduces all incoming damage by 15% for allies. It doesn't reduce it for himself, but this is why you built him very tanky. He's another monster. If you don't have the Violent Runes, you build him Swift Energy, Swift Revenge. Try and build him as tanky as possible. It still works, guys. These are the Runes I have for my Darien. <coughs> Alright, so now I'm going to talk about two obtainable monsters. Even though they're not farmable, they are obtainable. Okay, Sooner or later, you're going to be able to obtain them. Varomos. Honestly, he's a must. You have to fuse him. I, I Great monster to fuse. I love the fact... One thing that I do like about what Comtuas did, Varomos and Sigmaris do not contradict with each other when it comes to fusion. So, you can fuse both. He has this passive right here 
that removes one harmful effect for each turn he takes, and he recovers 15% of the hit points for himself only. He has a 33% hit point leader ability, which is useful. He has an AoE stun. When it's maxed out, it's at 60%. And then he puts dots with his first turn. Damage over time. Constant damage. So, all around, great monster. Another monster without a wasted move has changed the whole meta of the game. Another obtainable monster, a lot of people ask me about him. Why I built him. I built him for TOA hard. Now, he can be used for TOA normal. Absolutely. Why did I build him? He provokes with his first skill. He's another monster with just about almost no wasted moves. He provokes with his first skill. He has an AOE heal and defense buff, which is very important for TOA hard. Not as important for normal, but if you have a squishy team, the defense buff helps you out a lot. And then he has this passive over here, where this is where the provoke works great with him, is when he, in, if the inflicted damage is less than 20% of his max hit points, it's, it, he has the damage. So mine has, let's just say for argument's sake, 30,000 hit points, and 20% of 30,000 is... 6,000, if they hit less than 6,000, let's say they hit 5,000, the hit is going to go down to 2,500, 2,500. So, great monster to have. If you summoned him, I'd build him for Trial of Ascension. So, guys, I've only done 1 through 70 so far. 71 through 100. I hope I will be done with it by the end of the week. This series has actually just drained me completely because of the problems I've had with the with the app that I record with. So stay tuned, guys. I will be finishing this series. I'll talk to everybody later. Thank you for watching, people.